The problem with limitless gender identity is that it defies some basic facts of life. At various points, for example, I've identified as a black lesbian, a two-spirit penguin and a cat. Uh, but despite willing them into existence, at no point have I sprouted whiskers or flippers. Reality has trapped me in the body of a much maligned middle-aged white dude. And reality came crashing home for a team of female basketball players at a high school in Massachusetts last week in a very literal sense. The match was reportedly abandoned after a biologically male trans woman player injured three girls on the opposing team. Well, the local athletic association said it's against the rules to exclude a player based on their gender identity. They decided to put in inclusivity and the rights of the individual above obvious fairness in competition and above the safety, as it turned out, of the majority of the players who were biological females. Like so many of these decisions, these rules are perfectly well-meaning. I don't think these people want to do ill. They hide behind the umbrella of wanting to promote and support trans rights to fairness and equality. My problem with it is that by doing so, they are eroding women's rights to fairness and equality. And excuse the pun, a lot of these things are just nuts, aren't they? Like the video we just saw. In a near-perfect example of live imitating art, this story reminds me of the Daily Wire film Lady Ballers, in which a team of pretty useless men identifies teenage girls to become basketball superstars. So a guy can become a girl with no physical changes at all. Oh, that's called gender fluid. So I can be a woman on the court and a man in the bedroom. I can't believe it. Nice! Day one of being a girl athlete? <laughs> I love you. We could dominate every woman's sport. Running, swimming, soccer. It would be a lot funnier if there wasn't a real truth to this. This desire to do the right thing, often in total defiance of factual reality and, frankly, common sense, is beginning to cause very real harm. The great Dr Phil spoke to Joe Rogan this week. He took on the vexed issue of hormonal treatment and gender surgery for children. It's interesting they choose words like uh, gender-affirming care, but really what they're talking about is hormonal therapy or sex reassignment surgery on children. All of the major medical associations have signed off on this, Joe. They've signed off on it. And I have never seen those organizations sign off on anything with less information as to whether or not it does long-term harm of anything in my life. And when I, when I ask about that, when I bring that up, then they immediately label you as transphobic. Of course. That's always the allegation. I get called that week after week after week for simply suggesting that the kind of scene we just saw on that basketball court is completely wrong. It's not transphobic to think that. It doesn't mean I don't like trans people or think they're not entitled to respect and equality and fairness. It means I want to protect women's rights. I feel the need to start almost every conversation on gender identity with a disclaimer. So here it is again. I've got no time for anyone who bullies or ridicules trans people. They can identify how they want. The question is how that self-identification manifests itself when it comes to other people's rights. I don't think that transgender people can expect to have fairness and equality at the same time that they are destroying women's rights to that same fairness and equality. If that makes me sound transphobic, I think you're the one with the problem. Because I couldn't be clearer. I want fairness and equality for both. Right, the Piers Pack is back to discuss this, and some of them already visibly bristling. We're going to talk about a number of things. Uh, Prince William's intervention about Gaza, Donald Trump and those golden shoes, um, and some other matters like Madonna falling flat on her face again and me suggesting it may be time to retire, Madge. Uh, so my uncensored super pack, the uncensored contributor, Esther Cracker, the comedian James Barr, and from New York, the conservative commentator, Deborah Lee. Well, welcome to all of you. Um, all right, James, let me start with you. I could feel mm, the bristling. I'm so glad you are starting with me. <laughs> feel the bristling, but, but I want you to really identify what makes you bristle when we discuss these trans issues, because you cannot 
in all good conscience, look at that basketball court. I can, actually. And what happened, and not think this is ridiculous. I can, actually, because what you're failing to mention, and I just quickly Googled this whilst you were chatting, mm -hmm. um, there were six players sent off in the FIFA Women's World Cup last year. They got red cards. Women are also doing the same thing to each other in sport. Did you see the size of that, of that trans Here's, woman? You were not there. Let's talk to the people that I saw the video. affected by that clip. Let's the ask them how they feel. But also, I want to pick up on a few things you said. You said that, um, that you support trans people and that yeah. you, you're, you're not OK with people bullying them. No. Yet you're also talking about how you identify as a penguin and yeah. a cat. Like you know that's, why? That's Mickey taking. Hang on. And that is but technically you, transphobic. You, you know, well, hang on. It's not, though, is it? You're oversimplifying. But you're not, you're not giving the context of why I said those things, right? The context is really important. Yes, they can take my clips and put them around TikTok and everyone throws their toys out the pram. Fine. But put context onto the table, right? Go through those things. What's the context? Sorry, what's the context? Go through the saying? things you just said that I said. You said that you were a cat, okay. that you were a Let's penguin. Take the cat. There's a phenomenon called furries, with kids turning up at school saying they're cats and being treated like cats by teachers. I think that's completely and But that utterly... has absolutely nothing to do with trans people, so no, it's completely irrelevant it doesn't. in this conversation. It's about self-identification. Which has everything to do with trans people. It I doesn't, mean, the question though. is, where well, do you, actually, draw, where actually, do you draw the, the line? Well, hang on, the trans issues are part of self-identification. The point is, you can now just put your hand up in most sports in the country and around the world and say, I now identify as a woman. You and know that's not true. No, no, it I'm sorry. It's so difficult I'm sorry. to identify it's really not. as a woman. It's such a it's long really not. process. Right, can you I cannot ask you, you change your gender. Was, you can just lady. change your... It is so difficult. You can change there are your so testosterone many, levels and compete. There are so many barriers to health care, and it's terrible. And people okay, like you on. are creating what about Rachel, this massive... What about Rachel Dolezal, who pretended to be a black woman, even though she was a white, blue-eyed woman from, I think, was it Wisconsin? This is, again, another no, subject where, where, where that people doesn't make any sense. Where do you draw the line? Because somehow, someone identifying as a cat is ridiculous, but someone identifying as the opposite gender, which is literally impossible, is not ridiculous. So where, where's the line? You but can identify you're talking about as an inanimate a different object. Race, but why, is, why, is, make, why, is, why is mocking people who are themselves making a mockery of self-identity? Why is that bullying? Because it, it's not mocking, it's, it's not that they're... I'm sorry, I'm confused with what you're saying. This argument Do you actually think we so should respect... Layered. Young people who go to school Why? I'm not identifying as a cat. I'm not talking no, about that. Just to be clear, that you raised that with me. You raised it and no, said no. that you weren't a trans. And you said to me, I was being effectively a bullying well, trans. Let's talk about the penguin. What's that? By saying, I think kids identifying as cats and being respected for it is nuts. You said. Nothing to do with trans people. You said that you identified as a cat, as a penguin, as a You know a why gender. a penguin? Because the BBC came out and said that there were a hundred different ways to identify your gender. So I said to but the... This is I true, said, wait a minute. Is. I said to Benjamin Butterworth, who was the, the, the guy who came on Good Morning Britain, so am I right in thinking you can identify as anything? He went, absolutely. I said, and you have to respect it. Yes, OK. In that case, I'm a two-spirit penguin. Great. Well, right? I'm happy At which point he said... <laughs> no, at which point well, he the said... Problem is, which point he, hang on. At which point he said, you're being ridiculous. And I said, hang on yourself. There are not a hundred genders. One of them was astrogender, an affinity with the stars and planets. This is bullshit. Listen... So you and I should have a proper discussion about trans rights and women's rights without getting into stupid, ridiculous arguments about whether if I say it's dumb for kids to be allowed to identify as cats, you say it's transphobic. But what you're missing, I'm not saying that is specifically transphobic. What I'm saying is that by saying jokes like that, you are empowering people it's to a bully. Okay, let me bring it. All right, let's you bring are bully, You let are bring empowering it. people to no, you're bully. No, you're not, you're not, you're not. What you're doing is you're mocking a ridiculous concept. Let me bring in Deborah Lee. Deborah, you've waited very, very patiently. This is a... I've got to blame America for this. This all started with you lot, and it's come over here. When you... You know, when, when, when you sneeze, we catch a cold. So thank you for bringing this ludicrous woke uh, stuff over here. But on <laughs> hey, this issue... Hey, don't blame me. I stand up <laughs> against it. <laughs> I mean, I just feel but like... I, yeah. If we can't have a, a proper, reasonable debate about things like trans women competing against biological women in sport and it being unfair without being accused of being transphobic. I think that's really sad, actually. 
I do too. And I think it's a way to just shut people up when they don't agree with what we're saying. But it's extremely ignorant to not see how the trans movement has created the way for people to self-identify as penguins and frogs and bears and whatever else they say. If you see on TikTok, there's a woman who purposely makes videos about how to use frog, frog self pronouns. And to say that this did not stem from the trans movement allowing people to self-identify however they please, nothing to do with facts or reality, just whatever they please. If you are fully a man, you have all genetically male DNA, and you suddenly identify as a woman, that's the same as somebody identifying as a penguin. Although we can still have compassion for those people and want to get them the best care and make them be okay with themselves and happier in their own bodies, to say that this is not connected is completely ignorant of the past few years of culture in this country. It's all connected. Yeah, and I think, James, the problem is what people on the woke left do, they weaponize all these things, immediately adding obic to everything. So if you raise a quizzical eyebrow about anything which is transparently wrong or unfair, they just say you're obic, whatever it is, transphobic, bigoted, blah, 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 whatever it is. I think you're empowering transphobia. I don't necessarily think you're being transphobic, and I appreciate that you think... So you agree now I'm not a transphobe? Right. I never said that. But what I you think did, is... I think you just I'm did. definitely not going on record to say that. I you think, should, you I should think because I, I'm not. I'm not, Piers, because it's up to you to prove it, and I don't think you are I don't are have to right prove now. anything. But listen, we know that... I have we always said I negative. support trans rights to fairness and equality. It's people like you that have called me transphobic. But by having this and conversation you don't have any outside evidence. of that, it's ridiculous. Look, I sort of... I, on the whole sport thing, I think it's an interesting conversation, but I would go even further with my woke ideology, and I would actually suggest that we should be putting... We should not have gendered sports. I think everyone uh, should be... Oh, great idea. Type. No, wait, wait. I knew it. I this, think everybody this, should be in a sports fantastic, team by like body type. Fantastic. And then everyone will be safe, fantastic, and this entire nonsense will be over. Fantastic idea. So we have the gender-neutral Olympics, and guess how many women biological women well, let's end put, up winning medals. Oh, zero. hang on. No, we put that would be, team. That would be a big, fat zero. I will be in a team with other men that are my size. You'll be in a team with men that are, you are your size. You'll be in a team with women that really? are your size or men that, that, that are your size. Really? That, that works for wrestling. How many that, women that sprinters safe. have you seen who look like Usain Bolt out of interest? But you wouldn't put them against each other. How would you do it? You would have people like Usain Bolt together, mm. people that are his yeah. size. You would have people that... They'd all be men. Okay, I, well, they I, might not I, be. You might I, have women that... James, that are his I size. weigh the same, and I'm the same height as Lionel Messi. Great. Will we put on the same football yes, team? Yes, I think you should be, yeah. Are you mad? <laughs> I think no, I'm not mad. You... But All your right. conversation is mad, and if you're arguing about body types and biological no, shapes, you're missing... then you should put everybody together based on that rule. How You've are you ever going to with... improve, then? If you, got... you don't play against people who are better than you. I grew up as an athlete. I played many sports my whole entire childhood. If I played against men or women who were th just the same as me, how would I ever even get better? You need to be in a group of just mixed remember, amount of people. The, and I think well, that's that so argument, dangerous the United to put States women against women's, men. Yeah, the United States women's national soccer team played, I think it was the Dallas under-15 boys team, and they lost something like 8-1 or well, something. Yeah. Right? I mean, there, right there is the whole thing. Right? I've got a clip to play you, actually. We'll do it in the next segment. It shows the physical disparity between men and women more clearly than anything. It involves me and my rippling biceps. Um, but before we get to that, let's talk about Donald Trump's sneaker brand. So he announces at this event the other day that he's selling a pair of gold sneakers. Uh, and somebody bought them. Roman Scharf, a founder and CEO of Luxury Bazaar, bid $9,000 for a signed pair. He was shamed for being a Russian oligarch. Um, what do we think of this, Esther? Would you have paid $9,000 for Trump's signed gold sneakers? Uh, I would, actually, because he can sell it for probably 10 times that amount. Yeah, I thought it was a bargain. James, yeah, exactly. would you buy them? I can see you. No, those. absolutely not. Your kind of colour? They're disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to wear them. It's more the commercial value. What do you think of the person who bought them? I mean, I'm very happy for him if he wants to spend that much money on something as ridiculous as a pair of shoes, but that seems like a waste of money. You could probably get your house it's an, for that. It's an investment. Is it an investment? It, it is an investment, is seriously. It? I, no, I would take it, yeah. I just well, I'll tell you what, James, you can actually... You can tell him yourself, because Roman Sharp is joining us. Uh, he's on his way to mar lago right now to meet Donald Trump. No way. Uh, Roman, great to see you. Um, thank you very much hey, for joining us. Well. According to one of my guests tonight, um, it's absolutely disgusting what you've done, <laughs> paying $9,000 for these sneakers. Your response, please. Well, first and foremost, I didn't realize the internet and the media was going to throw up over a sneakerhead buying a pair of sneakers. <laughs> I am a sneakerhead. I'm a big Trump fan. And I put the two together and I said, you know what? Nine grand is not a bad price. 
I've already been offered twenty thousand for them just to, exactly. just to be on a record. Of course, I bet if it's best. worth a lot more. I mean, look, are you, for the record, a Russian oligarch? You don't look like one. You don't sound like one. Uh, well, close. I was born in Ukraine, actually. Mm. I, I am an American. I'm a U.S. Army veteran, and uh, yeah, I looked at my bank account this morning just in case. And no, it doesn't seem to match the Russian <laughs> oligarch status. <laughs> you're the, the actually a U.S. military. Not enough. You're a military vet, American military vet. So when, when people have been spewing all their bile, as they do with anything to do with Trump, without knowing actually about your record of service to your country in America, how do they you feel saw, about that? They saw Russian Trump mm. and they went off. Yeah. The, your Daily Mail UK, are the ones that dubbed me the Russian oligarchs, they have since apologized and changed the title to Ukrainian businessman. <laughs> how, about just a, how about just a man? You guys were yeah. talking about identities here shortly. I was listening. And uh, just a man that likes sneakers, that likes Trump, that bought a pair of sneakers, and the world went crazy. End what? result, however, is I get to meet Donald Trump. It's well, that's amazing. the thing I was going to ask you, because I've, I've been to Mar-a-Lago. I know Donald Trump very well. I talked to him the other night, actually. What are you going to say to him when you see him? I'm going to say that I am grateful for the opportunity to meet a man who is, A, my favorite politician, B, is a great businessman, and number one, the biggest patriot of this country that I live in, and I am the same way. I am a patriot of this country. I put a uh, response video onto my Instagram channel that went viral and everybody picked it up, basically saying that the worst part about this whole drama was the fact that it once again showed me just how divided America has yeah. become. Over yeah. political issues. But I don't mean, you think I mean, that's because of people like Trump? For example, if we look at January 6th, I mean, you're a defender of liberty and freedom. Thank you for your service on behalf of my American friends and family. But don't you think Trump is to blame for some of that? I don't. That's I think crazy that uh, our media has been so weaponized. This is exactly what they do to Trump supporters. So Anyone who rallies Trump. in support, they try to attack him. I mean, in, in defense, in defense of Trump supporters, January 6th. in defense I of Trump supporters, I, I hope you realize that the, there's the choice between Donald Trump and literally a corpse. So I don't necessarily always blame Trump supporters. The, the, the opposition is on a lot. Well, I'm actually curious, uh, Roman. I mean, just you know, for people who hate Trump, and we know there's lots of people that hate Trump, lots of people that love him. For those who really do hate him, why, why do you feel so supportive uh, towards him? It's a very simple answer, and people ask me this all the time, and the answer is this. Trump is not a politician, right? And this is what you hear. He's not a good polished politician and so on and so forth, and that's what I love most about him. He has nothing to prove. He doesn't owe anybody favors like a typical politician brought up in the system in the United States. When he became president, his goal was what he said. He wanted to make America great again, and I truly believe that. Now, whether he's perfect or not, we can argue this till the cows come home, as they say. But at the end of the day, he's not a typical politician bred through the system from the bottom up, owing a ton of people and companies favors on the way up. He's here because he's already accomplished all he needed to accomplish in his life. Let he's me a ask billionaire, you. for Christ's sake. I mean, I, I would say, look, he, he's... Very flawed, but then actually a lot of people that I know are very flawed, present company included. Um, I think that he has a style about him which is incredibly appealing and incredibly unappealing in equal doses. Uh, I also think he has the thinnest skin of anyone I've ever met and the thickest. So he's a man of many contradictions. Uh, but there's no doubt, as things stand, if Joe Biden insists on running for president, I think Trump will get re-elected. And it's going to be an amazing thing to watch. But let me ask you, uh, Roman, you're about to go and see Donald Trump. Uh, are you wearing Are you wearing the sneakers? No, I brought them with me. They're actually not my size. They're right. a size 11. Uh, I, uh, yeah, they are. My son just handed them over to me. He's, he's, oh, my son is in the car look. with let's me. Let's have a peek. Uh, let's see. What's your son's name? Uh, my son's name is Marcus. Marcus. Hey, Marcus. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Good to see you, mate. Good to he see was, you. I was at a sneaker event with him that he was doing. Whoop. All right. Hold on. So here are the shoes. Fantastic. Wow. This is the sign they piece. Very gold. Signed by Donald very, J. Trump. Very, very Donald Trump. Let's say that. Signed with, and I can tell that's his signature because he signs them all with the big uh, black Sharpies. He carries a whole lot of them. He has a beautiful signature. Yeah, yeah. And, and what are you going to, when you see him, what are you going to say to him, Roman? <laughs> I'm going to have a casual conversation with him. I mean, not many men get an opportunity uh, to meet with a sitting or, or ex uh, or future president of the United States of America. And my number one question is going to be is, off record, guys, please tell me what you're, go what you're doing and what the plan is to win this following election because we need you. OK, well, listen, uh, I, great of you to, to break off from your epic journey with the boots. Um, send him a message from me. It was good to talk to him the other night. 
So your old mate Piers uh, Donald <laughs> is ready to come to Mar-a-Lago for round two of the interview that rocked the world. So put a good word in for me, Roman. You're, you're my big contact right Absolutely now. Absolutely, will do. Just just on a personal note, I'm a big fan of yourself. Oh I've been my watching God. you for quite a while, so <laughs> thank you so much for having me on your show. This is yeah, Roman, it's a pleasure. It's great to have you. Thank you very much. And, right, and your care, son, guys. Marcus. Take care. All right, bye. Don't be a hater. Oh my God, I'm don't, not. Don't being be a hater. See, it's interesting. I want to bring in. I want to hang on. Hang on. I want to bring in Deborah because I think James's reaction. This is one of the reasons why Trump is so popular, and one of the reasons why the Democrats and liberals attempt in America to try and throw the kitchen sink at him about everything they can think of is backfiring and making him stronger and more popular and more electable. It's because of this kind of hysteria that goes on. Absolutely. And when Trump was saying that he, they weren't coming for him, they were coming for us, and he was just standing in the way, he wasn't lying. And that's exactly what we see. Anybody who supports Trump or even says that they like him, suddenly you're treated as if you were just as bad as Trump, which is, in their eyes, equivalent to Hitler, which, as a Jew, I take a lot of offense in that, because I think Donald well, Trump was million, a phenomenal 18 president. million people voted for Trump in the last election. T nearly 10 million but more... But suddenly than... we're all the crazy Well, ones. hang on. It was nearly 10 million more than voted for him in the first... in 2016. People forget that. Astonishing. Far from a repudiation. Yes, he lost, but 10 million more Americans went out and voted Trump second time round. And I, like I say, if Biden runs, given the state of him right now, I think Trump wins again. There's a Lincoln Project attack ad about Trump, which I wanted to also uh, ask the panel about, because I think this crosses a line. Let's take a look. Donnie, I always knew you'd blow it. You were always a fool. A joke, low rent. I'm ashamed you have my name. How did a son of mine turn out so damn dumb? I've been dead 30 years, and I'm still ashamed of you. Now, that has been put out by the Lincoln Project, a big political action committee founded by moderate conservatives and Republicans. Moderate. Um, you know, Esther, when you watch that, that's Fred Trump. That is Donald's father, who's been dead for you know, a long time. That's not him obviously saying that. That's just an AI mock-up of, of him saying... Very poorly done. Poorly done, but crude and nasty. These are supposed to be the moderate. Yeah. I mean, it just it reeks of desperation. If you have to go... If you have to stoop so low, you really can't criticise Donald Trump because this is the, these are the same people that say Donald Trump is crass, he's rude, he's always insulting people. Mm. You've literally done the exact same thing. You've resurrected the memory of his father to, to put words in his mouth in a very poorly done ad. James, I mean, do you agree? How are these people... Better? I do largely, but I think it's worse when Trump does it because he's doing it to millions, billions of people How is it worse? The OK, I'm sorry. Whereas that's just okay, one so, person. But again, that's... here's where I have a problem. Mm. It's, it's the equivalence is so fascinating with you is that you have a much bigger problem if Trump does it than if someone does it to Trump. Because and... Trump is affecting... Billions of people, and this guy, 18, this AI, million, is only upsetting people. children. Okay, no, no, these people, people are are these people are trying Listen, to stop Trump. Also, I disputed that earlier. I never ever called a Trump voter crazy. I've never said that. You think they're crazy? I, I don't, but I do think. Do you think it's crazy to vote Trump? I wouldn't personally vote. Is it Trump. crazy to vote Trump? Is it crazy? A little bit when he's okay, got so they like are crazy 90 in your eyes. Well, right. no, so, I think it's well, crazy to, be to clear, vote. Yeah. Hold on, you can't just say, I've never called is it Trump. crazy to vote Trump? I don't Trump. call Trump voters crazy. Is it crazy to vote Trump? Yes. That's not the crazy. same thing, Piers. Let me bring that is not the same thing. Yeah, but let me bring you in. I think that is a pretty sick thing, what the Lincoln Project did, actually. I think that's absolutely abhorrent and sickening to use someone's dead father to try and embarrass them or attack them or put them down. That is so low. It's a different level. This is the problem with politics nowadays. If they cannot debate on merits, they will make it personal rather than say, oh, Donald Trump didn't have good policies in our opinion, or we didn't like Donald Trump. Here's why you shouldn't vote for him. They try to use his past father to disgrace him. That is so evil. And that is something that they should be absolutely ashamed about. And it goes to show that they just have nothing against him. All they can do is launch personal attacks and try to play on people's emotions. Right. But that is the right is really that's disgusting. doing that. That is the Republican yeah. Party that are attacking Trump. So that isn't the left. That's actually his own people. To but I've seen extent. I've seen uh, X today, and everyone on the left absolutely love it, lapping this up. Which again, comes not from everyone. You check with every single left left. No, left but is it, no, left all, all the ones who have be kind in their X bio 
profile. You check them all, did you? Yeah. If it has be kind, you, you know, they, you you know they are pronouns, utterly right. repulsive. Be, be kind <laughs> is a euphemism politics. for being utterly disgusting. I honestly uh, think it is awful too. I think there's some it's, horrible, it's, it's gutter things politics. There. It is garbage. All right. It's gutter politics. I want to move Trump on. Trump has definitely done worse. No, he, he hasn't done. I think he's done no, much he worse than no, that actually. I think invoking his dead father that way is despicable. Let's come on to Prince William intervening in the Gaza War. Uh, he said, I remain deeply concerned about the terrible human cost of the conflict in the Middle East since the Hamas ter uh, a terrorist attack. Too many have been killed. I, like so many others, want to see an end to the fighting as soon as possible. Deborah, uh, you're Jewish. What do you feel about the future King of England intervening in this way in, in the conflict? I think if he really wanted this war to end, he would call on Hamas to surrender and return all of the hostages. This he, he war did. will be over the minute that Hamas surrenders. He, he, did. he didn't tell them. He said he hopes the hostages come back, but he didn't say entirely. And this is a war that would never have happened if it weren't for the he said brutal release the hostages. by what, Hamas what else, what else innocent could he people. Say? He said release the hostages. Call out Hamas. Hamas is the only people is any, propagating is this war. Hamas put down Hamas? their weapons, the war would be over tomorrow. Is no, anybody celebrating? No, nobody's what? celebrating. We're all, we're all, we're all under the, we all know that this, this happened because of what Hamas did on October the 7th. We're not crazy people. We, we, unfortunately, we all know what happened. I am glad that you agree with that, but unfortunately, that's not what the world is necessarily agreeing with. If you take a quick scroll on Twitter, you will see so many okay, people saying uh, that October Twitter 7th is was not justified. Representative. It didn't go I mean, far Twitter, enough. Twitter is full okay, of, of talk, bots trying to sell Okay, walk down the streets in Manhattan. You want Twitter's, to pass I'm sorry, Twitter's full of bots for trying to sell me porn. Okay, let me bring in, let me bring in James. My problem with this, I think, is that I absolutely support Israel's right to defend itself. They have a moral duty to defend their people after the horrific attacks on uh, October the 7th. They were beyond horrific. The question is proportionality. And also, what is the end game? It, it seems to me all that Israel's now doing is flattening everything that's there. Northern Gaza's pretty well being flattened. They're going after southern Gaza. And now they've given a warning that in two and a half weeks, they're going to attack the biggest refugee camp with one and a half million people, six times the normal population of that camp, they're going to attack that to eliminate the rest of Hamas. Well, if they do that, they're going to kill tens of thousands of innocent, more innocent people, children. You know, half the people in Gaza are kids, right? That's my problem. This looks disproportionate now. It does. I mean, I've barely spoken about this because it's just so upsetting to, to all sides, to all of humanity. The pictures coming out of Gaza are so upsetting. Um, I, you know, I've heard you talk about remember. a proportionate response and I, I honestly don't know how I feel about that because there is no proportionate response. So, what, so how do you respond to it? I honestly, I'm not a politician, so I don't have an answer to that. I'm not sure how. I you mean, respond. Deborah, do you? Have... I do think that killing millions of innocent people, thousands of innocent people, is yeah. wrong. I mean, Deborah, my, my problem is that this again. I've read, I've yeah. read the arguments, and like I say, I'd, I'd support Israel's obvious right to defend itself. But when you have the volume of children now, I think it's 12,000 have been killed, tw another 20,000 orphaned, many, many more injured. Um, you know, tens of thousands more injured and innocent women who have nothing to do with this. And you, you think that Rafa may be next to be attacked. You, you surely, just on a human level, you must be beginning to have qualms about the scale of this. Absolutely not. Of course, I feel for the people who are affected by this war who had nothing to do with it. But that is entirely to blame by Hamas, their elected government, who have no concerns about their own people. They were elected to protect their people, and their people would be totally safe right now if it weren't for their brutal you know, attacks I suspected on October you would say that. And there is no proportionality. Let, let Hamas the is only using them as a human shield, right? This is to eliminate every single Hamas member and to make sure no that this how never many happens you again. In the because process. if they have... Well, maybe they shouldn't be hiding among civilian members and dressed like you know civilians. Who's also Why don't you using condemn people them for hiding in refugee the camps and hiding in hospitals? Because, no, I'm sorry. That, I'm sorry. That excuse That's a stop being valid after 29,000 people died. That is a disgusting comment to make. The IDF is the most amazing make. defense if you, force. If you, if, no, I'm sorry. You say to say they that use it's human shields. The IDF shakes assault. buildings and lets people know before they hit. Don't talk over each other. We know that Hamas don't care about their civilians. We've known that. Hamas has a track record going back for years, right? But over half of the people in Gaza right now facing this brutality, weren't even born when Hamas was elected. You know that you can hide behind that excuse and say, oh, it's all Hamas's fault. Actually, the track record of Hamas not caring has already been there. They didn't care about them when they uh, uh, attacked on October the 7th. So it's now upon the Israeli government to stop hiding behind the excuse of Hamas and actually do something about it. You can't, you, I'm sorry, you can't use the same human shield hiding argument behind the excuse of Hamas. Eliminating Hamas died. is 29,000, did you hear that? 29,000. And how many of them have been terrorists? 
Oh, oh, how many I, of them guess what? would have Israel survived if this were Israel October 7th? They can't even this complain. This is not an IDF fight to say. They can't even complain. How many of them have been to say that October 7th never, ever happened again? talk about each other. The problem, the problem on the numbers is when you talk to anyone on the Israel side, they say they don't believe any of the figures that Hamas give them. But when you ask Israel, well, how many Hamas terrorists have you called? They give you precise numbers. How do they know? Yeah, exactly. Mm. How does that work? Explain that. They're just firing bombs. Because the IDF is a real defense force that's not run through Gaza. Oh, so do they have tattoos on their foreheads? run by Hamas putting out their numbers. Oh, so Hamas fighters have tattoos on their foreheads. Is that it? Is that how you identify them so quickly? What? Hamas well, how, how, do you, how do you identify the Hamas to make it even harder. from an innocent person that's being pulled dead from rubble? How do you identify? Do they have tattoos? What are their physical markings? I'm not an IDF soldier. I don't oh, know. You, you have eyes, IDF right? If you I, care, do but I, I know you're not asking that out of good faith. You're asking ah, that to try okay. and make the IDF so look bad when the IDF... All right, let me... Okay, let me... All right, let's just cool the temperature a bit here. James, on a principle of William getting involved, is that wise? I think so, yeah. I think William should start saying something. I think for a long time he's just not said anything. Um, I, but he's, he was very measured as well. Yeah, she he, did say something after October the 7th on behalf yeah. of him and his wife, right? Yeah. I think he, and, and Israel were happy with his statement that he's no, just... They, they, I don't they, think they he's were. taken sides. I think he's said what most people Israel now feel. Israel doesn't care what other people think of this then conflict. Then stop taking really foreign aid. Nobody cares. If you do people not care, don't talk about the conflict. Let, let Deborah say what she wants to say. The people in Israel, the Israeli government, and the IDF do not care what his opinion or That's anybody fine. else's opinion is right now. Stop taking all they care age. about is getting our hostages but back. But that is They're part of the Hang on, hang on, Esther. Hang on. Part of the problem, Deborah, is that it's very clear that Netanyahu and his very right-wing cabinet do not care what anybody has to say, including the United well, States. Well, that's a problem in itself. That's a different problem. And in Israel's no, opinion right problem. now, prior to October 7th, there was an extreme divide between the left and the right in Israel. And actually, since this war, politics has been put down for a minute and people of all different sides and different identifications have joined together and say, right now, all that matters is getting our hostages back. When okay. that is over, we can talk let's... about the government and reevaluate what we need to all do. All right, let's move on to something. Just two little lighter things to end on. Because um, Israel is always a very heated debate, and I understand it. I, I feel strongly for both sides. Honestly, I do. Um, we're talking about a female gym influencer in the US called Ali Singer, uh, who goes by the username The Ripped Barbie. We've got a clip of this. I'm gonna wear a shirt. Can you at least have some muscles? But that's like. If you're not going to wear a shirt, can you at least have some muscles? Listen, I get it. You want to train at a gym where everyone keeps their shirt on, that's fine. But this gym isn't one of them. I called Absolute Recomp in Texas, and their rules say you can train with your shirt off, and you signed up there. Therefore, you need to follow the rules, including the rule that says you don't film people without their consent to post on social media. So just to clarify what went down there, this gym influencer shamed this guy on social media for not being ripped enough uh, to exercise shirtless. She filmed that, posted to TikTok, and then a fellow male gym fitness influencer, Joey Swole, posted a video and got her banned. So all sorts of stuff going on here. Esther, where do you sit on A, people filming in gyms, mm -hmm. and B, the shirtless issue? Do you need to pass an abs and uh, I, I'm a bit, I'm test? a bit of a prude. I don't really want to see anyone topless. No. Generally speaking, I just think it's, I don't. it's, it's disrespectful to I the public. I didn't know people did that. You can, you can wear a singlet. I bet you do it, don't Of you? course I do. <laughs> of course. <laughs> How did I know interested. that? But I think filming someone in a gym is just... Is that because you basically see it as a, as a dating scenario? Right? Um, I think it can be. Yeah. Is that why you go shirtless? Sure but no, that's absolutely not why. I, if I'm in a class and it's really hot and the aircon isn't on... Really? You strip down? Then I would take what? my top off. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Why? Is that bad? I, I, Are you I, judging I, me? I couldn't get away with it. I'm just saying. You I could mean, get away I, with I, it. I don't want to see your half-naked flesh. I think, right well, here. I don't want to see yours either, Piers, well, but well, I wouldn't funny enough, shame you for I it. I wear proper clothes in the gym. And in fact, this goes back, actually, to the argument we had about men v. women in sport. Because I have a trainer in, in uh, West London uh, called Sarah, and she actually competed in the Olympics for Team GB as a speed skater. And she's very proud of her physique and her muscles and everything else. And she keeps challenging me to different things each time she comes back from Dubai, where she has a, a gym that she's running there. And each time I beat her. So this time she said, I finally found something I can beat you at. So this is your gender Olympics point, right? So she's decided it would be the T-bar. 
that we would have a T-bar competition. So we began to lift ever bigger weights on the T-bar, and then we got to 55 kilograms, about 120 pounds, and this happened. <laughs> Her idea and a challenge. I've got big back and arms. Really? <laughs> to see how big that arm is. Good luck. Come on, uh, boss, pull. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> I feel like Sarah so wasn't really even trying. So just to be clear. Oh, oh was that it? <laughs> just to be clear, I don't go shirtless because I don't want to make other men feel inadequate. But secondly, <laughs> but secondly, the point I would make there is I'm 58 years old. I'm not a spring chicken. I'm certainly not an Olympic athlete. And there you have a woman around half my age who is an Olympic athlete. You don't have an adjudicator in the room, so I'm not sure I can trust Are you this joking? Footage. Was that AI? Are you serious? Tears? Like, how do I know that was no, no. real? My actual regular trainer, James, was witnessing the whole thing and videoing it right. and apologised to his boss for the humiliation that then came away. Uh, Deborah, where do, you, concede. Sorry. Deborah <laughs> where do you sit with all this, Deborah? I mean, I, I think firmly you keep your shirts on, you show some decorum, and actually you don't film people in gyms without their permission. I would definitely agree on the not filming. I feel uncomfortable if I even take a picture of myself and there's some people who might be in the background at the gym because you never know what people are working on or going through and they don't consent to be on your social media or be right. in the background of your TikTok. But as far as being shirtless, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think if you're sweating all over the place and it's unhygienic, yeah, wear a layer of protection to absorb that stuff. But in general, as a woman, I understand why wearing just a sports bra can help you see in the mirror where you're lifting and make sure that you're actually toning and reaching certain muscles so if it inspires to work out and to get healthier then i really couldn't I think, care less I, and if honestly, i see a lot I of think, guys with a six-pack i'm not complaining i think seeing james Barr's naked flesh would be the opposite of inspiring me to great heights i have Piers, to say i think we should both do the gym topless together i challenge you <laughs> i really i really to don't see that <laughs> let's move on to our final subject this is a it's a sad story of a pensioner falling over not joe biden this time but it's a pensioner falling over let's take a look Madonna, who I think should have been uh, retired many years ago. It gets more and more embarrassing. James, you and I have juked it out about Madonna before, but honestly, mate, but she's now just falling over like Biden. It's time, isn't Madonna's it? Madonna's fallen over before and she's got back up again and she's amazing. Yeah, she's but see, the, the knees weren't as creaky. Um, honestly, then. like, Piers, you're a pensioner and your ratings no, he's are falling, not. so I don't know why you haven't retired. Actually, my ratings are great, <laughs> except when you're on. You're nearly a pensioner, and that's not <laughs> true about your ratings, actually. Uh -huh. the, um, let, let me ask uh, Deborah about this, because apparently with falls, a significant cause of pensioner mortality, and she is a pensioner, she's 65, <laughs> I, I'm genuinely concerned about her welfare. I think it's honestly on an individual basis. Like my grandparents are both in their 90s and they're spring chickens, as they say, lifting weights, going to the gym every day, really, truly healthy. But Madonna just doesn't look OK. And I'm sincerely sending help and good wishes her way. I think she definitely should be a little bit more careful. But That's... if she were to go out on stage, what? I feel like she'd be OK with what? that. Like, she doesn't look me. OK because she has, she's full of Botox. No, That's she, she's so she's a, patronizing. Madonna, is, is, a, Madonna is a complete and utter embarrassment. It is like your drunken aunt. This is from the wedding. man that opened this segment earlier with the word by calling himself a dude. Can we just say? Yeah. Like, What's speaking wrong with of embarrassing, I'm a dude. I think that's probably the most embarrassing. When thing. I go down to Middle America, they call me that British oh dude. Oh my god! They do. Great. The British dude. <laughs> this, well, I just it's my, it's my name. Leave Madonna alone. She's I, an I icon. Mean, it's only we could. There, it's a bit like Meghan and Harry. Leave them alone. That's the last thing they want, these people. Madonna won't quit. They're yeah. the most Until ridiculous breath, attention seekers in, in the history of planet Earth. Leave them alone. You're the biggest attention seeker ever, so that's such a hypocritical thing to I, say. I deserve attention, James. Oh, really? Do you? On that bombshell, uh, thank you to my pack. Uh, it's the first one of these we've done, an extended pack for YouTube. I enjoyed it, actually. Uh, so thank you all for joining me, and come back soon. Apart from you, James. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you.